Okay, so, um, Dr. LeGree's right. I'm really lucky to be here and just so happy that I can be here and share my story with everybody today. So, hopefully you can go out and share it with everybody else you know, too. Um, I was born with a rare blood disorder, Pancoya's anemia, and um, I was not diagnosed until I was 13 months old. And after my diagnosis, I was basically given a life expectancy of about 10 years. Um, without a bone marrow transplant, I, I had no chance of survival. So um, my mom and dad immediately started trying to conceive more children to get a match for my transplant. But you have to keep in mind, with this, they had a war, one in four chance of any other children they conceived would also have Vancouver's anemia. So they were taking all kinds of risk um, with that, just in itself. And then to even get a, a match was, you know, another another risk. So, um, so they had my sister, Audrey. And Audrey is uh, two years younger than me. She was born perfectly healthy, no FA. So that was the first big, <laughs> she's healthy. <laughs> But then um, Audrey wasn't a match, and so then um, they continued to try and conceive, and then um, they had my sister Emily. Emily's three years younger than me. Emily was perfectly healthy, but best of all, Emily was a perfect match. And when I say perfect match, Emily was a perfect match, and her HLA typing was a six out of six. So she couldn't have been any closer of a match to me than if she had been an identical twin. So we were extremely lucky to find the perfect match. And then once we had a perfect match, you know, my mom and dad, of course, they had hope for my survival. And so my mom always says, you know, she was, she was going to do everything she could. And she wasn't going to stop trying to save me, you know. And she was going to do everything it took. So with this in mind, she went all over the country. And we had doctors everywhere. And I just want to mention that Dr. LeGru um, is the doctor who um, delivered Emily. Um, when Emily was born, they um, decided to save her cord blood. And this was a very revolutionary procedure. In fact, it had never been done before. And um, they saved her cord blood, and her cord blood, um, you know, it's, it's rich with stem cells. And so Dr. LeGru was there to witness the very first collection of cord blood stem cells. So, That's not old <laughs> so we're very, very happy to have had Dr. Legree there to do all of that. So um, Emily's cord blood was collected, and um, like I said, it was a very revolutionary thing. So there were 13 other doctors in attendance. You know, it was a, a really big day. Um, and so then the cord blood was then stored um, in Indianapolis, in, in Indiana, because I was born in Indiana. Um, and. Um, that's kind of where everything else started. We ended up, you know, um, see, I was four when um, my blood counts dropped to the point of needing a transplant. Mm -hmm. And so um, because of financial issues, like with how much it cost in France and how much it cost in the United States for a transplant, and just because of, you know, uh, how far along they both were with the research of stem cells and using cord blood, we ended up going to Paris, France. I was four for my cord blood transplant, mm -hmm. and transplant was a big success. So, happy about that. So. <laughs> <laughs> Mom knows all of the little details about everything. I, I, I just remember bits and pieces of what actually happened, you know, when I was that young. But, um, you know, then I went on to have just a normal childhood, and um, in 2006, um, I had a kidney transplant, mm -hmm. and Emily the donor for the cord blood transplant was my donor again. So I'm extremely blessed to be able to say that I have one transplant. I had two transplants. And without cord blood, I wouldn't I wouldn't be here at all. But the best thing about it is that having that cord blood transplant from a perfect match with Emily gave me the ability to have the second transplant, the kidney transplant. Because after they took Emily's kidney from her body and gave it to me, my body immediately recognized it as my own because we are so identical in our blood and our tissues and everything. And so um, I now know I don't have to take any anti-rejection medication. I take zero medications related to anything to having to do with transplantation at all. And as you all know, I'm sure that you know every transplant recipient has to take some form of medication for their entire life. So my quality of life has, has just, you know, 
know, just like anybody else's. I mean, I'm, I'm now 25, and I live in the city of my dreams where I've always dreamt of living. I live in New York City with my sisters, and I'm here speaking to you, which is my lifelong dream. So, but now we have to introduce my mom, because she 